What's up guys? Today I uh, tried to float my trim with these new spring trees and it was better but it wasn't staying in tune yet. So I started thinking how did Eddie Van Halen use a uh, vintage six screw tremolo and then I thought about Stevie Vai too. So did some research and I found Stevie uses a trim stabilizer. Now I know Futon um, Rockinger, Black Box, there's a bunch of them out there that make them. Uh, they run about 45 bucks. I found them cheaper on Amazon for 16 something. I actually didn't really care for Amazons, so I got one from Sweetwater for $19.99. And lo and behold, I mean, people are using them with the Floyd Rose too. So this is for vintage, two post, and Floyd Rose systems and it will keep your tremolo, your floating tremolo, so you can bend and rest your hand on the bridge, uh, you know, without it coming out of tune and going flat or sharp or whatever. So first thing you're going to want to do is set your entire guitar up. Next thing you're going to want to do is crank your claw all the way in and from there, we tune the pitch, all six strings. Now, if you're using a six screw vintage tremolo like I am, you want to see at least one thirty second from the body to the bottom of the screw. And then looking at that, you can see there is at least a 32nd of an inch maybe not so much a 32nd of an inch but the front of this is not on the body now the back however since we ran the two claw screws in this part is on the body and we're gonna back these claws out in till we reach about 230 seconds from the bottom of this bridge here to the body and you're gonna tune all six strings back up and if you're still not there you're gonna repeat the process until you are okay now after a couple of times going back and forth between drawing the claw screws out tuning up if we look over here at the bridge I'm going to set this camera right here like this so you can get a clear shot. We're going to measure and you can see right at the corner there we're at 2 30 seconds of an inch. And if we look down you can see we're slightly raised at about 1 30 second of an inch there. And that's where we want to be set and I'm going to show you the claw screws and make sure, I can't emphasize enough, make sure you have your neck relief uh, set, make sure you have your saddle height set, make sure you have your action set for your string height that you like and take note also my whammy bar started out from the body to the bottom of the whammy bar at one and nine sixteenths of an inch after I adjusted this, it went to one and one half inch. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this center screw or spring and make way for the tremolo stabilizer because that got to get mounted in the middle. And I know Steve Y has two of them in his and he mounted them in between. So if you want to mount it that way, go ahead. You're going to move the center spring to your side of your low E and your A string. So we're going to take a pair of needle nose and without doing anything, everything is in tune, these are set. We're going to grab the spring right here and we're going to pull forward and up and we're going to release that and then we're going to take this spring off. Alright, so all we're going to do is pull and pull up like that, put it here and then we're going to reseat it right in that hole okay I had to stop the camera there a minute because I couldn't get that to seat into the hole but that's flush so make sure that's flush 
after we tune back up and make sure we're into uh, we don't need to tune back up but we got to make sure we're still in tune this is where we're gonna set the, the trim stabilizer so I did have to uh, tune the D and uh, the B string that went out of tune when I moved that spring a little bit so just be aware of that okay so now your third second and first string G B and E should the third string should be able when you pull up on this whammy bar you're gonna go a step and a half above note the second string your B string is gonna go a whole step above and then your first string your high E is gonna go a half step above so just to let you hear what that's gonna sound like it's gonna be right now the way it sits without the trim stabilizer it's gonna go out of tone so let's move on to setting up the trim stabilizer alright so here's our uh, tremolo stabilizer it's an official Floyd Rose part comes with two rubber pads four little screws and then the unit itself now if this thing cost $45 I would have just milled one myself being it's 1999 you know I'm not going to go through all that work, but for 45 bucks for such a little thing and a simplistic thing like this, yeah, I would have machined it myself. So these are made out of brass, uh, what I'll call the piston, and then the thumb screws, they're just nuts, and then you got a spring, and then you got some all thread running through there, and then the housing, and they just rounded it over, you could leave it square. We'll take this apart and show you what it looks like, it has like a little ball bearing there. All right, so here it is apart. If anybody wants to know, you know, how long this thing is, we got a two inch piece of all thread, and then the overall length to here is uh, one and 15 sixteenths. That's from the front here to the back here, and then from uh, this point in the front to the back of here is one and five eight and then the inner part is like one and three sixteenths and then you have the rear part right here this little piece here and you're gonna need a lathe and you know tap and dice or a tap set and that slips into the spring hey, let's see we got like almost nine sixteenths of an inch there the front one like this is going to be uh, 3 eighths of an inch and then this part here you're looking at 5 eighths of an inch and then with the ball bearing part you're looking at 11 sixteenths of an inch. The spring that's 7 eighths of an inch. So the diameter of both of uh, these parts here, the one that's shorter one longer, it's 100 and 90 thousandths of an inch and then the piston part that's 100 and or actually 270 you would drill that you know maybe like one to two thousandths over and uh, let's find out the height of this so we got 470 thousandths that way uh, let me see the thread diameter of this I'll tell you that too. So the tread diameter of that is 150 thousandths. Alright, so this uh, thread here is a 36 threads per inch. So that's going to work out to like an 836 screw. Okay, a little tip. This uh, end here. Here's the piston end and here's this end. This takes an Allen key. Now I don't know what size it is, but... I had an extra one so I filed it down and I take it that when this is mounted this way you can put that end in if you have enough room and then when you're adjusting it the center all thread won't turn okay so what I did here was I put the Allen inside the all thread and then I finger tightened this piston is what I'm gonna call it is tight as I could by finger now what I did was I ran this side in until it snugged up with this there's a 
about five sixteenths of an inch from the edge of here to here and then I ran this thumb wheel up against the piston itself now we're gonna take this thumb wheel and run it back till you can't run it back no more and bottom the spring out okay so you could see now I use the Allen uh, wrench as leverage and then I just twisted this back till this collapsed so there we have it in the guitar now there is those uh, rubber pads where you want to set this okay put the rubber pad on your tremolo block and you're gonna just let that ball bearing just touch that rubber block we're gonna do is use some rubbing alcohol and a q-tip and we're just gonna go ahead and clean this surface here so we make sure those little pads will stick okay so I determined that that ball is gonna be in line with this hole right here and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a pair of tweezers and I'm gonna stick that right there and we're gonna make the top of this flush with the bar okay so after you apply that there you can see I'm centered just take your finger and press that in there to seat it okay now that we selected our drill bit size this is what I'm talking about the diameter of this is the diameter without the threads on this screw this happens to be a number 56 drill bit which is uh, 46 thousandths of an inch so if you don't have drill bits go to Harbor Freight you get yourself a set of number bits next what we're gonna do is take this screw we're gonna put it in there and you have to compensate now take the drill bit butt it up against the bottom here and then we're going to put a piece of masking tape just like I did with the string trees on the drill bit and we're going to take a measurement from the bottom of this plate to the tip of the screw put masking tape on it alright so you can see better now what's going on here you got the screw sticking out and then if we butt the tip of the drill bit up you can see the masking tape is touching that bottom of the screw this is our depth guide so we don't go too far into the cavity of the guitar and we might have to add some masking tape to this side because I don't know if my chuck is going to grip, grip it uh, the proper way okay so like I said my chuck I knew it wasn't going to hold a 46,000 so wrap some tape on there to make it bigger and uh, yeah they have collets and stuff like that you could use but for what we're doing here it's fine and then just tighten it up and our goal is just so the drill bit don't spin and it, it's not gonna next you're gonna wanna if you have a dark colored guitar like I do you're not gonna be able to see your mark so all I did is put a piece of masking tape in here we're gonna seat this in here and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and butt that up that it's just about touching okay like I mean literally it's just touching like that we're gonna mark uh, use a pencil whatever you got mark one hole and then we're gonna drill that you're gonna wanna hold it very steady and then you're just gonna go in there and touch that I already did that so let me pull this out and you can see I have a little dot right there now try to make sure that's right in the center so we're not moving that mechanism back and forth we're gonna take our drill and we're gonna put it on that right there now make sure the drill isn't cocked forward backward or side to side that you're going down straight then this masking tape let me move the camera all the way down here so you can see you're gonna drill down to the bottom of that masking tape till it reaches the body of the hole okay now you gotta be really careful that you don't snap the drill bit because it's only 46 thousandths of an inch we drilled that and we're gonna back that out now now we're ready to put the mechanism in and make sure you use a little bit of soap on the threads just for lubrication because it's like tapping a hole in you know a piece of metal and don't just crank it in go back and forth until you get it seated okay so you can see I have just a little bit of soap on there we're gonna put it in here okay so here's another tip for you 
instead of putting this mechanism down on the body take your screw put it through there and take your screwdriver in one hand and with your other hand hold the back up or the whole assembly up I should say and then start the screw after you have the screw start it we'll drop that and then we're gonna go ahead and turn this screw in and out just like so until we reach the bottom alright so after you seat that bolt I like to make sure I'm parallel with the body of the guitar so from this ear back to here all I did was just butt the roll up against the body of the guitar measure out to this ear and then come back and do the same for that and I end up with 15 30 seconds of an inch now what we're gonna do we're gonna take our drill bit and we're gonna drill line it up in the center of that hole and drill down till the masking tape touches the plate of the mechanism alright so once you got that started now we have a reference point we're gonna loosen that front screw up and just move the whole mechanism to our left and we're gonna finish drilling that hole alright so you see how I move that and then we just go down and drill that now we'll place the screw in there okay so you can see I have this one and this one and they're just snug they're not over tightened you don't want to strip these we're just going to repeat the drilling process here to here with the masking tape then we're going to remove both of these screws take the mechanism out and then touch with the masking tape to the body so we're at the right depth okay so now that we have the holes drilled what you're going to do is tighten it in a crisscross manner meaning you're going to tighten this one ever so slightly until it reaches the body then you're going to do this one until you reach the body then we're going to come back and then do this one and then last we're going to run this one down and do not over tighten these or you're going to strip the wood there's not much thread there now we're going to uncompress this screw here or this thumb wheel that it comes back this way okay so what I did was I released some tension here put the tremolo arm in and you I'm gonna pull back on the tremolo arm and then I'm gonna adjust this wheel back so this piston will sit tighter against here to make our adjustments so it's important to have enough end space here and then this way you can bring this this way to touch your trim bar and then you can fool around so that's why we did it the way we did it all right now I unloosened all the tension on the screw you could see the trim bar here and this uh, ball bearing I don't know why they didn't just machine a, a piece of brass and just round it over it would have been a lot better in my opinion because this little ball bearing it kind of floats back and forth and it kind of fucks things up and let me get the guitar in focus here and you can see there's no pressure on the trim right now but you have a lot of piston adjustments so you could come this way or go back this way okay now you can see what I'm talking about here let me tilt the camera this way and the guitar that ball bearing watch it you see how it moves in and out so you want that compressed like that before you start doing your you know adjustments all right a little tip for you guys to make this uh, tuning with the, the trim stabilizer easier once you tune your strings and you get them all tuned up to pitch if this reads flat and you use your whammy bar down in the down position and it reads flat we're gonna come over here to the stabilizer and we're gonna turn it clockwise if you're at the butt of the guitar you're turning it clockwise to increase the tension of the spring a couple of turns and keep doing that until your guitar becomes back in pitch and then try it it's gonna save you a lot of time okay so once you got it to tune and you uh, depress the whammy bar it should come right back to that note and you see it does now I'm going to turn the guitar around, I'm going to show you what it looks like. What I had to do was I had to back this side out a little bit to bring this forward and then 
I just tighten this up a little. Then I pull back on the whammy bar to release this like so. You'll see in a minute. Okay, see that? You pull that back and then all I did is make a slight adjustment backward to loosen it. That brought this assembly forward and put more force here. Then I tuned back to standard tuning or whatever tuning you're using. And then I repeated that process until I got a happy